go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Sunday night. Another edition of KFTV Post Game Live presented by Manscaped. Knicks back at home at MSG looking for number four in a row against the hot Sacramento Kings team. But you know when Julius sees Sabonis, he sees red. Coming into this game averaging 38 on the Monte Sabonis in the last two games. Julius picked up where he left off, man. But it was a grand opening and a grand closing for Julius as he was ejected in the third quarter after a brilliant, brilliant first half. He had Jalen Brunson leave this game with an injury. So it was left to RJ, Quentin Grimes, Miles McBride, uh, uh, Emmanuel Quickly, and Mitchell Robinson to close the show. And they got it done, man. Knicks get a dub. 112 to 99. Four in a row. One game over 500. And uh, with a big, big matchup this week against the number four seed Pacers, Knicks could be sitting pretty and moving up in, 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 in these uh, Eastern Conference standings. So, see how it goes, though, man. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Salute to everybody in the chat. CP the franchise, Alex Tars the Tratacaster in the building. <laughs> so, <laughs> where do we want to start this off? Okay, let, let's let's start it off this way, right? Because I was on the putback with Ian Begley last week with Ashley. Shout out to Ash. And I had mm-hmm. some comments on Julius that, that f- for the most part, a lot in the fan base agreed. But the Julius Hive came at me, man. CP, why do you want to trade mm. Julius? How could you? You're a hater. You never root for the Knicks. <laughs> you, you you just hate for you just hate on Julius all the time. It's personal. I mean, I had people literally weeping in my on, on my Instagram comments about this guy. So here we are. Mm. Are uh, brilliant, and they wanted me to give him credit tonight. Remember, Al? I, I said the last two were, were bum nights. So they wanted me to give him credit I tonight. Asked you. you you came out on Twitter said, "Will CP give him a ten tonight?" Because he was that good. Twenty seven points, a brilliant first half, dominant. Dare I say, on the offensive side of things. I mean, he was he was breezing past Harrison Barnes, leaving him in his wake, torching him mm-hmm. from three levels, step back threes. I mean, he was. This was COVID, Julius. And, and when he when when he's in his bag like this, when he's in his arsenal like this, it, it reminds me of a bootleg version of my favorite play in, in, in Carmelo, for real. So so <laughs> so when he's cooking like this, I'm like, wow, okay, let's go. You know what I mean? This 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 guy's into it tonight. Mm-hmm. It's a bonus. You expected a good game from him. I I, I picked more than 23 points on prize picks for Julius, and I got that done. That was an easy money. That was an easy pick. So then Alex goes to me on Twitter. He says, CP, at halftime, are you going to give Julius a 10 out of 10 tonight? And I said I said to myself, let's wait and see how the second half unfolds. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, Julius, who giveth and taketh away, finds himself All in the, the midst of a meltdown and gets himself ejected from the game. I mean, look, all I'm going to say is, for the people who say I'm I'm a Julius hater, I'm this, I'm that, look, when you're the best player on the team, you're going to be held to higher standards. That's just the bottom line. That's just the reality. I want excellence. I want excellence. Is that so hard to ask, Alex, from the guy? We know he's an offensive talent. We know that. But is it so hard to ask for him to put together 48 minutes of smart basketball. So now, you know, he lands on his head, he gets hurt, and he, he has his back turned to the play, chewing out a ref, gets one tech, and then runs to the baseline ref and gets himself tossed out the game. Your thoughts? Ooh. It was so funny because I literally, I was ready Cause you know, I broke the scale once yep. for Jalen, for Jalen Brunson this year. I gave him a 15 out of 10 because that's how good Jalen Brunson was against the Charlotte Hornets in that overtime win. You may have given him a 10. I was ready to break the scale again tonight, wow. but I can't, I can't <laughs> cause that's how good he was tonight. It, 
CP, within 24 minutes, there was it was nobody else. It was no. Julius Randle, and it was Julius Randle. He was world great tonight. He was great. It, it, fantastic. But when it comes down to, and they, maybe he's he, you know maybe I'm going to say block because I'm going to say this. When it stay when I when it comes down to a full complete game, as you talked about, is he going to give it to us? Most of the time, outside of that one spectacular season where we got 48 minutes to play. I know he didn't play full 48 minutes, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, throughout an entire game, you know you're getting 120% effort. The last two seasons and most of his tenure here, I don't know what we're getting. Okay? And so when I come out here and I say, maybe, okay, you should trade him. I don't see him being the long-term, you know, there's a cap. It's because it's stuff like this. And it's it's okay. Like, other players do it, too, around the league, where they yeah. get into their feelings you chew out reps, that's fine. But when you are having such a great game, you're playing one of the best teams now in the NBA, you are having a spectacular performance, the refs are not always going to give you that call. Oh, the, the refs you are terrible to tonight. Don't get me wrong. The refs are terrible oh, tonight. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. But they're going to do that on some nights. You have to stay composed and be the leader of the team and be that guy moving forward yeah that's all i'm asking for uh benji benji's in the building uh-oh i know he's hyped tonight benji let's go what's up man um it's amazing i've been to two games this year the home opener and tonight both were like the most incredibly stress-free games yeah the game was like wire to wire easy win um i'm worried about brunson though man that was a that was kind of a hard fall it was right yeah. in front of me and uh so i'm going to the locker room i don't know i can't see any scenario where he doesn't miss uh, I, I could see him being out a couple of weeks, man. To be honest, with you. that was he a pretty should. rough. He should. Yeah, I mean, I I'm just worried about um, you know, life without him. But um, yeah, man, it was it was it was a great great win. There's really not not a whole lot to say on that negative side. Uh, the defense is great. Um, you know, Grimes is playing is playing terrifically. Mm -hmm. Forget the offense and forget the points. He's uh. He, he had a lot of situations tonight where he went along the – he loves that baseline move. Yeah. Where he does – he gets the, the quick pass and he goes baseline and either swings the ball or drops it off uh, for, like, Mitch. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a great game all in, man. Um, RJ with another solid performance. That's two straight. Um, I would say, obviously, like, the only negative would be just Randall. Like, for, you know, moving forward, he's got to – He's got yeah. to know that he can't do that. Okay. Uh, that's just inexcusable. The only that's the only situation that um that could have hurt us and you know yeah. changed the game. So uh, yeah. did you did great you win, man. did you wear your Fournier he, jersey he tonight? And did you shout out Fournier? Uh, uh, sounded like you were close to the bench. Did you shout out Fournier tonight? Of course, man. I always rock, stay true to myself and, and represent my guy. Um, in fact, uh, there was a French journalist. I was walking around the garden and yeah. he saw my jersey and started interviewing. Me. Look at that! Look um, at it was pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty funny. But uh, on that note, um, if Brunson is out, um, does Fournier get any action? I know Alex mentioned. <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> I knew he had to end the call with that question. Al, you, Al, you opened the door. You left the door open for that man. I blame you for that man. Oh, good. I like open up Pandora's box once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, uh, who knows? You never know with Tibbs. Um, you, you just never know. Personally, I just, like I said, in the in the, at the top of the show or whenever we discuss this, I just feel like he'll go uh, with more experience at the point guard. He'll go with Rose to run the offense. Let McBride continue to do what he do. Play defense and play more off ball. And not really give him that, that responsibility to run the entire offense. That's why I think it's just more likely to go with the Rose. You'll get some some scoring off the bench and, and that experience in running the offense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Congratulations on your SNY debut. Shout out to you. Shout out to Alex, man, the whole Knicks fan TV squad. Appreciate it. Now, I'm, I, I rarely call in, CP. Mm -hmm. I rarely do. I just listen. I enjoy the wins. Sometimes on the losses, I don't even tune in because I'm just – I'm an emotional Knicks fan, to say the least. But <laughs> I had to call in tonight, man. I felt like you guys were just going too hard on my boy Julius. Like, I, I just felt so like you guys, 
Well, I, I'll break it down to you like this. Yeah. He he he's he's our number one guy, right? Okay. He's on the team. And a lot of people are giving credit to Tibbs right now for the nine man rotation. And credit is due to Tibbs. But also after the game, Tibbs said that when Julius got that technical, some of his teammates should have stepped in. How many times have you seen yeah. guys get emotional and the teammates step in and kind of pull them back? They should have. You know, I think we just let – we didn't let – he still got to take onus because he's the one who got hot-headed. But mm-hmm. at the same time, he's having a great season. Another – if if the All-Star game voting was today, he'd be an All-Star. Mm-hmm. He's bringing our team back. Mm-hmm. He gave us our first uh, playoff appearance in like a decade a couple years ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. he had an off-season. The whole thumbs-down thing, I wasn't with that. Mm-hmm. But he's having a good year. As players and as fans as well, let's like kind of sweep this under the rug. Mm-hmm. You know, not comp- – I know you got to talk about it because, you know, you got to give the analysis of the mm-hmm. game, but, but you don't have to harp but, on it. But let me add, but let me call, ask you this. Go ahead. We started the game uh-huh. off saying what that he had a monster game. Did we not give him credit for the monster game? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm not saying that you didn't. I'm not saying that you did. I just felt like you kind of went a little bit overboard with the. <laughs> oh, this is why we should have. This is why when we say we want to trade him, it's for reasons no. like this. He doesn't do this. Th- this is not a repetitive thing. No, but but what I'm what I what, the point is, the mm-hmm. point is, is that when when fans say, "Oh, you're so hard on him," you this, you that, you, you, you the other thing, it's it's reasons like this because this is our this is our best player, bro. Your best player is yeah, always going to be held. Often, though. It's it's not, it's not to say it's that, but but thing. but it's not to say right. This is this is really the first time this season that he's gotten thrown out. But he has done he has done it yeah. in the past. And so all we're saying yeah, is Yeah, but they, but you know what compounded it was the first it was like a it was like you, then the first caller came in with that too. So it's kinda well, like, yo, are we just bashing our I, guy? I, no, I, I can't, an I on, can't control I can't control how everybody <laughs> else feels. I can't control how Jose feels. Uh, this is an equal yeah, opportunity yeah. show. For everybody to get their opinions in, and and well, OJ that's had why his. I had to come in with the oh, other man. take. That's why I'm here. Okay, I had to come in with the defense. Balance. You guys, was, you know, you, you, you jumped on my boy, man. You jumped him. <laughs> so I had to, I had to, you know, you see your boy getting jumped. You got to jump in and fight for him. Balance, so, hey, Julius, you know, keep doing your thing. If you're listening, you're an all star. This is how we want you to play. And to me, you're a number two. All we need is a number one. We don't need to trade you. We need to find us a number one. For me, the trade chips are R.J. Barrett. Cam Reddish, and if we can throw in, if we have to throw in like a Mitch and all the picks, let's do all of that to get a number one. We have a number one, Julius number two, Brunson number three, and we got a championship team. That's okay. what I got for you guys. Appreciate appreciate the show, man. I love listening. I'm going to keep on listening. And uh, just let me know how you feel about the take. All right, appreciate it. I mean, listen, man. You know, some of the, the, the Julius Hive – you, they they want to act like he's above criticism. Where do we get to? How do we get here? How do we get here where we can't point out not only the good, but also the bad? How do, how do we get here? Why is it that just because he's having an all-star caliber year that we can't say anything bad? And and that and that everything everything that you say bad, you know, Robert Randolph, perfect example. Uh, on 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 Twitter, <laughs> shout out to my guy Robert Randall, and and if Robert is listening I hope tonight, you get that, I hope you get the Friday night. To I told him, I said, <laughs> because in the first quarter, he's he's atting me. He's like, oh, where's all the Julius haters now? And I'm just like, yo, it's not. Everybody thinks that because you say something on the on the negative side that it's hate. It's not hate. It's not hate. I don't hate. I don't know Julius. I don't know him personally. I don't care what he's got going on personally. It's not hate. He did a bonehead thing, and I'm going to call it out. You know what? Look, man, I love this win tonight for the simple fact that uh, the Giants-Knicks doubleheaders are always tough to take, especially if both teams lose. Now, I didn't expect the Giants to get a W today over Philadelphia, and they basically got 21 skunked. They got dubbed in the first quarter. So at that point, I had pretty much bailed on them. (laughs) And and said, you know what, let me save my my blood pressure, my stress for the Knicks tonight. So I bailed on the Giants. I went to go check my guy Ty and the jazz band, calm my nerves a little bit. Went there for two hours, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Brought it back to the center, came home refreshed, 
watched the Nick game. Julius was cooking, and then RJ finished the game. We got the W, man. Let's go. We'll be back on Wednesday for Post Game Live, Knicks versus Bulls. We'll make sure that you tap into the channel uh, for uh, our Game of the Week preview with Corey Talba, the Harvard Herald, so st stay tuned for that. Set your notifications for that one. Hit that like button. Hit the share button. Remember that this show is available in audio podcast format, all the major podcast pl platforms, so no reason to miss it. Manscaped.com, promo code uh, KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. And also prizepicks.com, uh, enter promo code KFTV for a 100% match on your deposit of up to $100. Shout out to Jerry Chris for the fight out super chat. Last minute. Got it in at the buzzer. We'll see you guys this week, man. Have a great week. Have a productive week, people. See you later. Peace.